Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Austin and if you're new here, I make book related videos and today we're going to jump into some of the books that I've been reading recently. It's been a really busy past couple of weeks. I've had a lot of work. I've traveled a little bit and we also had a hurricane come through so there was a lot of crazy things happening. But now that I'm all settled back in, I wanted to do a video to show you guys the books that I am currently reading. So let's get into it. The first book that I have to talk to you guys today about is Negro Land by Margot Jefferson. I picked this one up during my trip to New York City and I read about 30 pages of this on the plane on the way home. This basically documents Margot Jefferson's life growing up. Her dad was a physician and her mom was a socialite and she is a middle to upper class African American woman during the 40s and 50s so this just kind of talks about the culture of that time, that particular class and race and um, sort of the inner workings, things like that. Um, so far it's really interesting. We've just gotten a lot of back history these first 30 pages so I'm excited to get into her personal story where she talks about her family um, but I'll let you guys know what I think of this when I get further into it. The next two books that I have to talk to you guys today about are two that I'm very excited about because they are part of a book club that I've joined within the past two months. It's actually one of my favorite musical artists that started this book club. She is a female rapper. Her name is No Name. Yeah, it's No Name. That's her name. And she tweeted out something about wanting to start a book club, specifically books written by persons of color or LGBTQIA identifying people. When I heard about this, I was really excited. So we started in August and the two books that I'm about to show you are September's pick. And the first one actually just came in the mail. It is The Cooking Gene by Michael Twitty. And this book is exactly what the subtitle suggests. This is a journey through African American culinary history in the Old South. Um, it talks a lot about ownership of recipes and who actually owns Southern cuisine. Michael Twitty actually traces back his roots. I thought that was really cool. I haven't actually started this one yet, but I have flipped through and so I did get to see the family tree that he has here at the beginning of the book. So you can see the family tree is pretty extensive going all the way back to, I believe, the 1700s. I'm really interested to read this one though because I obviously grew up in the South and loving Southern cuisine. I would love to learn more about its cultural roots. The other September pick is a book that has been on my radar since it came out and a poet that has been on my radar for even longer. It is Don't Call Us Dead by Donna Smith. This is a collection of poetry. Donna Smith is a really popular button poetry poet. You can look his videos up on YouTube where he does a lot of slam poetry and I really enjoy his slam poetry that I've seen on YouTube and I have a lot of friends that have read this and highly recommended it. Um, in addition to the awards that it's won, I have been looking in person to find this in my local used bookstores and I have not been able to find it so I finally while I was in New York, found it in a bookstore and went ahead and picked it up. Literally two days after I purchased this book, the September picks for the No Name Book Club were released and this is the second one. So I'm excited to finally have this in my collection and I'm even more excited to finally get to it this September. The next book that I have to show to you guys is one that is a continuation of a series that I've been reading. If you've seen any of my other videos, then you'll know that I have been currently reading the Harry Potter series this year for the first time ever. I've never read the series ever in my entire life. I missed that boat when I was a kid. So over the past few months, I've been slowly making my way through the books and I just finished the third book a few weeks ago and I've barely started on Goblet of Fire. This is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. I can't wait to continue you on with this. These are really easy to read and lighthearted and fun. This will definitely be great to keep in the mix. The next book that I have to talk to you guys about is a book that I'm not planning on reading front to back. It is a book that I'm really just using for my own essay writing and as sort of a reference text for myself and also because I feel like it's an important book to have in my collection being a gay male and that is the Stonewall Reader. This is a Penguin Classics edition and this is basically just a collection of nonfiction that includes essays, interviews, speeches, all that took place around the time of the Stonewall incident and really this is just about the gay revolution and the people that helped to pioneer that. So I really wanted to go ahead and start making my way through this just to get a little bit more on the history and more personal accounts to help with my own personal writing projects. And the last book that I have to talk to you guys about I actually don't have in person and that's because I'm listening to it on audiobook. It is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. 
Um, I've actually never read any Toni Morrison, unfortunately. Being that she passed away recently, it made me realize that I've never actually read a full body of her work, and so I started listening to this one on audiobook. I'm about halfway through, and I love Toni Morrison's writing style and her descriptions. The story mostly follows Piccola, and basically it is a coming-of-age story. So far, this book has focused on the point in a child's life, kind of when they start to realize that race plays such an important role, unfortunately, in our society. I'm only only halfway through with it. So far, I'm really enjoying it. And I have to say, I am excited to pick up another one of Toni Morrison's novels. And that's all of the books that I'm reading right now. I know for some of you, it's going to seem a little weird to have more than one book on my currently reading list. I used to be the same way where I would read one book at a time until I realized in college that that was not going to cut it, that I had to be reading multiple things at multiple different times and had to keep all of the stories and plot lines and characters and all of those things straight in my own mind. So after college, I had hasn't really been a problem for me. I actually enjoy reading multiple things even more than reading one thing at a time because if I'm reading something and not enjoying it, I have a backup that I can go to, something that I'm also reading that I know I'm going to enjoy. Or if I don't actually have the time to sit down and read, I'm able to commute and listen to my audiobook. It's just nice to keep a few different things going. Again, like I said, having Harry Potter be something light and easy is really nice to throw into the mix, especially when I'm reading a lot of nonfiction and heavier things like I am this month. If you're scared to read more than one thing at one time, don't be. I highly encourage it. It really can improve your reading life as it has mine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, comment down below with anything that you're currently reading so we can chat about it. But until next time, I'll talk to you guys soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.